and understanding about the and I and your membership that are going to help you see more results in the future. Now, at this point, you should have already been inducted into your chapter and introduced to your mentor. Your mentor is a fellow BNI member who's going to walk you through this process as well as be able to answer any questions you may have about your weekly meeting. And it goes on, but let me show you this. <clears throat> What I told the presidents is, you better do what it says in here because your people are now going to know what you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> okay? But this section number one, each one of these, there's six sections. How many of you have had people go, what do you mean by a tier one? What do you mean by BNI? What do you mean by, this is what I added. This is why I like this program. I can add whatever I want. Print it out for them. Tell them where it is. It's all of our language. Okay, that we have that they don't have to be confused about because it's there, everything. All right, now I want you to see this. Section one, it covers open networking. It covers the member launching pad speech, which is that brand new speech that we're going to give them to do. <clears throat> it gives them slips and online entry. Guess what it does here? It takes them through how to enter every slip, point by point by point shows the online account, I mean, shows the connect, click here for this, fill this in, submit this, print this report, blah, but it also shows how they can keep records in the connect system, which is really cool. So you'll learn a lot when you watch it. There's all these videos and every video goes along with a section of their training, which is awesome, right? Don't you think? All right, now, Oh, uh, they're not long except for that one. That one is longer just because of the fact it takes you through all the slips. Uh, maybe they're 10 minutes or something like that. And they just give you some guidelines and they keep pointing them back to you guys or the MSP or something like that. And there's some coaching videos in here by Dr. Meisner so they get to see who Dr. Meisner is. And we'll be adding things as we go. I think it's a fabulous tool for us it makes the mentor job a breeze. It makes all of us have easier time because they're trying to make everything online for us so that you know, we can have these tools available. So please, please, please use the Online Academy to do this. One of the things I want to introduce to you too is something that we're trying to do to really help the chapters improve. The retention rate in BNI, as well as in any other organization out there, it's not just BNI. Retention rates are very low in organizations. I don't know if you belong to any outside organizations, but retention rates are generally low. Well, globally speaking, the retention rate for first-year members in BNI is an abysmal 40%. And the reason is that they've discovered that we have so many things that those people come in and remember those levels. If they are overwhelmed or almost there and they come in, and they see the foreign language, and they have to do this, and they have to do that. They just didn't realize. They just thought it would be coming to a meeting, you guys were gonna shower them with referrals and their business was gonna grow. That's their expectation. But when we slam them with the rest of this, you gotta go to MSP, you gotta do this and that, they get overwhelmed. And one of the things that I'm gonna require you, I've asked it, but I really need to require it. How many of you, when you do an interview, go through this? You must. Reason is, and I'm going to give you each a copy so that you have it, but you really need to go through just the general policies. You don't have to cover, like read every word, but you do have to show them. Because if they sign on the dotted line and you have never told them they have to attend weekly, and that they have to you know, show up or send a sub. And then you help them through understanding what that means and why it's important to attend weekly from the relationship point. You have made them sign an agreement that they don't understand. <clears throat> and then if they sign it and I can't refund their money, which I can't because it's on the agreement that I can't, then they're mad. And they think you did a bait and switch. So please don't. Make sure you go through this with them. Not in a hard way, and, but just let them know we're a professional organization. We, we work under professional guidelines because professionals understand professionalism. Professionals understand 
guidelines. Joan. Absolutely. You can also do it in the visitor host, depending on the visitor orientation, depending on your closer. <coughs> I'm in a sales class right now, very intensive sales class. And there's a particular way you can do this to help close without being hard and without being brutal, but just showing them what obligations are in. And we're probably going to do a whole session on that. Just so that you can know how to introduce things like this, but to help them with your expectations so that they get it and they know that they're joining an organization that's got some guidelines, not rules, don't use rules. Use policies, use, use guidelines, that type of thing, because really that's what it is. But I want you to use this, so if you don't have some copies, I require when we start a chapter that before I accept their application, they have to read this. That's the way it is. Because I don't want them coming into and helping me start a group that they don't understand what they did. And didn't I do that with you, Jackson? Made them do it, right? Now, I can't beat them and make them read it. I, but I do give them. And one thing I liked about Greater Memphis, what they do, is they have, they have the policies, they go over them. But then when they do the interview, the person fills out that application on their own, right? They bring it to the, they have it in front of them at the interview. And what I have thought brilliant about what they do is that they'll go back and they have the application. And <clears throat> when it comes down to the part about the attendance and everything, the person's already signed it. But what they do is they say, here, you signed this application, and we want to make sure you read this part. And it talks about the attendance. Did you read that part? Yes, I did. Would you initial that? Because then people can't say, you never told me. Well, we have your initials right here, right? So protect yourself from that. And you want to make sure that you have your base is covered so they cannot point fingers back at you and say you never told them, right? Um, the only other thing that I had down was an idea on the interview. If you have conflicting, we'll have two things, uh, conflicting categories um, where you think somebody might, might cross. In the visitor hosts, we're trying to teach them, if you have somebody who's, say, a CPA, and they walk in your door, and you already have a CPA in your group. What do you say to that person? What should we say? Okay, so Brian said they need to be quiet about what they do so that they don't step on the toes of the person that is in the chapter. Michael Ann. And then you can go and introduce them to the other CPA. Okay, because in your chapter, again, you had two CPAs. One of them, if they'd have said, no, you can't come in here, which we have had a chapter do that, we have to had them leave. I mean, send them away. <laughs> like, oh my word. But you say, let us introduce you to our CPA, because once in a while, like Mike Wan said, you do two, some different things. You two might be able to collaborate. If you're interested, you can work that out. Now, this is the one thing I wanted to get to. So say they go, we think we can, because I use the word, we only allow one person per specialty, rather than profession, because profession means CPA. Specialty means, in their case, it was they had a CPA who did nonprofit work hated taxes, wanted a CPA who did taxes, they both can coexist, they're both titled CPA. So that's a specialty. Do you send those two off to discuss and come back to you with the results of their discussion? Yes? Invite them to the interview. I'm going to tell you don't send them off alone. Why would I do that? 
that CPA might push them out. Some do. Some do. And this is what's important to you. They will come back sometimes and say, oh, we worked this out. And they know what they said each did. Do you know? No. Uh -uh. So they get in the chapter. It's all hunky-dory for a while. And then one starts stepping on the other toes, according to this guy over here. He's telling stuff I told him not to. And the other guy's, no, I'm not. We agreed to that. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. And you're like, I don't know. So what I'm going to suggest to you is that you have any kind of category conflict, you put the two of them together with a person from the membership committee. And you iron out any differences that they might have and write it and put it in their file. And that way, when something comes up later, guess what? You, you pull it out. You go, well, you did say that. And get them to sign it. And that way, they can't disagree. They put their signature as agreeing. Are you okay with what you said on this paper? If you are, let's sign that. Are you okay with your, what you said? Okay, let's sign it. Let's put it in your files. Boom, it's done. You don't have to worry about that. Any questions on that? Bruce? I've got another scenario that I've been dreading for months. Uh, I'm a custom home builder, and as a most of you all know, there's room to I'm Mr. being a home builder. I love my team. But I also have a plumber application That's right. You have to be honest. How? And Bruce does have a plumber that he uses, but you help, can help that guy know that the rest of the people don't. They're not going to refer to his plumber. Send yeah, Roger. send him to Robert. <laughs> okay. Those are all things we have to deal with. And the last thing I wanted your opinion on, in Israel, as one of the ways they solved their uh, decline of that, those first year and existing, because did you know the mentor position that Miranda just taught is more focused on new, but do you realize your existing members need mentoring? Yes. Absolutely. Whose job is it to assign them a mentor? Sometimes, mentor coordinator. How does mentor coordinator know that somebody's needing help? Membership committee. What you want to do, and this is what we're going to recommend, the mentor coordinators have a three-month checkup and a six-month checkup for new members. The more you check up on them, the better it is. Existing members at that six-month mark, you guys should pick up and go to them, no matter how long they're in the chapter. If they've been in 10 years, doesn't matter. They still need to be asked. So Shelly, how's business for you? Are you getting what you want out of this chapter? It can be as simple as a conversation at the meeting. It can be on a one-to-one. -one. But all the membership committees should divide the chapter up and go after each person and genuinely want to know. Because what will happen is these people on paper, and this is why you don't always go by the palms for every bit of information, they might look like they have a lot of referrals. However, are all the things on that paper quality? Unfortunately not. So if they look like they have a high rate of referrals and you're assuming they're fine, but inside they're seething thinking, I'm getting a whole bunch of junk, that if you ask, hey, Robert, how's it going? Are you getting the quality of referrals you want? And he goes, well, actually, no. And you say, tell me about that. Let me help you or I'm not getting the right ones, then you have a couple options. You can say, you know, we can help you with that. Let us listen to your weekly presentation for about a month, and let's start taking notes on it. I hope we all do that. You know, I convinced Tupelo, we went through this a lot, about keeping a notebook and having a page for every person. And on the, on the uh, um, evaluation sheets. That was the one thing that kept coming up. That was a brilliant idea. Brilliant. I've said that many times, but it just now clicked that if you're saying something and I'm writing it and I, I go back to you and I go, 
Well, you've actually said the same thing sort of multiple times, and you're going, no, I thought I changed it, and we got it written down as one way. It helps you understand you're not getting through to us. So you're not being clear to us if you don't give us the right clues, we can't find the right referrals. So number one, it's a responsibility for us to help you get better. But if you're not doing one-to-ones, if you're not doing some other things, <coughs> excuse me, we can come back to you and go, you know, let us help you do one-to-ones. Let us help you fix that. Whatever it is, do you think it's much easier to keep your team together than it is when they're up for renewal to find out they're not going to renew if you didn't even know that they were unhappy? So it takes less time. I'm trying to convince you it takes less time to do little checkups and leave the door open for them to be able to convene, you know, come to you and be honest about what they're doing. And we talked about that in Tupelo a lot, about honesty. All of us feel we're Christian, honest, or at least ethical and, and you know, have integrity. I don't think there's a person in here that doesn't. However, this is where we don't do a good job. You all know people that haven't done a good job of 60 seconds or have made a bad impression because they're late all the time, or they leave early, or they're always on their phone, or whatever, you know that. On the up and down the curve that we go through at MSP and advanced training, if you were to go to them, and I'm gonna pick on Brian because he's so nice, and I don't know, he'll be nice to me ever. <laughs> if, if Brian's like doing something that's hurting his impression, right? <laughs> okay, and it's hurting his image. Whose image do we refer to? His image, right? We refer to him as a person. And we need to be able to say to Brian, Brian, I want to help you. And I'm going to tell you something in all honesty. I want you to take it in the spirit it's intended. But you know, when you stand people up for one-to-one, -one, or if you're late, or whatever it is, I don't know what it is, you don't follow up on referrals. Any of the things you guys hear scuttlebutt, but you don't say anything. If I tell him in a nice spirit and say to him, I want to help you because it's really hurting your image, are you going to be mad at me? Yeah, it's a way for him to improve. And he might be wondering, how come nobody's given me, and nobody's doing one-to-ones with me, and you may be doing sales on every one-to-one -one you do. And the scuttlebutt on the street is, have you done a one-to-one -one with, I'll pick on Alan now, have you done a one-to-one -one with Alan? Don't. Have you ever heard that? <laughs> I've heard that. Don't. He'll try to sell to you all the time, right? Well, go to him and say, you know, we need to help you because I don't want you to think. Nobody likes you, but they just don't want to be sold. The honesty has to come that far. If we're a team, which we are, and this is our business, and we're building our team, wouldn't it be better if you knew that your message was the same week after week and we don't get it than to just assume that we're all dodos and we don't give you what you're after when you're not saying it right and when we don't have a clue what you need? I'm just asking you to be honest with each other in a nice way so that we build this really solid team of people who care and who really work on it. Shelly, you got a comment? Right. Regardless of our title, to do interventions from time to time. Mm -hmm. Because it's really, all of us are a reflection of each other. That's right. I want, I wish you would take just five minutes to talk about visitors. What makes a person a real visitor that gets put in a system? Because as I'm looking at our chapter, having been up there, it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, some of those people in my understanding, shouldn't have been mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Yes. Yes. Before we move away from that, I have just one thing to just say about Integrity, yeah. I think it's important that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. And you know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because if you don't know what you're talking about, you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. And you're going to be able to do it. 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 You're going to be able to do it.
Yeah, I don't want you to ever assume. You got to have some facts behind it. Yeah. Usually what I'm saying is that there's enough evidence that you've got to go to them. Not just something that happened one time or whatever, that you've got to go to them and, you know, clear up something that's been coming a track record. What we Robert. did last year was, and I will try and go back to it again, we separated each meeting and said, hey, there's, these three are the highlights, put three positives and three negatives, the membership group, the team, or executive team, look at it, summarize it, make sure the consistent ones are in there, and then we gave it to that person. So we didn't call any one person out any particular time, everybody knew that it was coming up. So we spotlighted two or three each week at the end of the meeting for two or three minutes and turned it into four play. And that kind of helped us nobody feeling the same like membership meetings and reviews. It wasn't like, oh, you're picking on me. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, whatever way you handle it, to be discreet and help the member, but <clears throat> as we, I don't want to go over time, but I do want to cover what Shelly said because I know it's important to you, is, um, visitors versus guests. A true visitor that you put in the system is someone who can, has potential to join. They have a business that could be a part of your chapter. They have a viable business. Um, a guest, on the other hand, is, and it doesn't mean, back to the visitor, it doesn't mean they will join, just means they have the potential to join. Versus a guest, <coughs> excuse me, which is somebody like the military or, or a minister who typically won't join a chapter, or your grandma who's subbing for you, or you know, doesn't have a business. Somebody like that who's just a visitor, someone without a job, we have those come. It's not a visitor, it's a guest, okay? A guest doesn't take and go onto your palms report to count for your conversion. Visitors count for conversion. So if you're having a low traffic light score, it could be because you're putting every person in looking good as a visitor when they're really not. They're a guest. Now, can guests purchase? Sure, because guests are, guests are really important for you for visibility. But as far as conversion, you can't convert someone who doesn't have any way to do, to do a business. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can. And if they're a BNI member, don't put them as a visitor. They can't join. Okay. If they're a sub, who could be? If they're a sub who can join, yes, they're a visitor. Wait, wait. I was told that you could. If they were subbing, they could not be a visitor and a sub at the same time. Because I have, I have brought. Mm -hmm. There's not a there's not an input for sub. You just don't count the person absent, but you can put them in because they could potentially look at your chapter and go, whoa, I want to be here. Unless they meant that it's a B and I member subbing, no, then no, my don't. Team comes to me. Oh, well, maybe it's your guest versus a sub. So maybe I that's my, what it is. My potential member to sub for him because he's not next week. I was told it could only count as his sub. It might only be able to be put in the system as either a sub or a guest of you. Getting credit, you don't no, get credit for that. Well, I'll have to check into that because I don't see why that would be a problem. Okay. But, Brent, uh, Deborah. Mm -hmm. So you can't just pick somebody to, I've seen this happen where you have a visitor come in the room and you don't want somebody to be counted absent, so you just hold, say, hey, can you sub for Robert? He's missing it. They don't do that. Don't do that. But they have.
Well, I was told he didn't come as a visitor. He might not. I don't know. We'll have to so, check on that. So, I don't know the technicalities of that, but I don't want to hold you up. Right, no. Think about this, because we're going to discuss this at Leadership Lunch. I'm back to Israel for a minute. The one way that they um, are fixing their improving their retention is after chapter 30 minute workshops once a month on a set day, so like fourth Wednesday of the month, and you pick somebody from your chapter that's outstanding at maybe one-to-ones, it's this month we do one-to-ones, somebody who really has a track record, not just had a good month, but a track record, who you can highlight and say kudos to you, teach our people a little bit more tricks on how you do that. Next month it might be somebody who is just outstanding at giving quality referrals. They upped their retention rate by 12% in less than a year, like six months. So I want you to think about that because we're thinking of instituting that after this training and see if you think it's not mandatory to whoever wants to come, that they've built it up so now people do want to come to it. And it just gives that extra little bit of support that somebody might need to keep them from quitting. Thank you all for your time. Please hand the um, evaluation to us. It's really important as we move forward to see what meant something to you and what you want us to cover at leadership lunches. The evaluations are over here if you didn't get one. Um, pass them around if you didn't.